Hi, everybody. Welcome to our second webinar in our college success series. This one is Money Matters and really just the ins and outs about college costs and how to cover those costs. So my name is Brett Gottlieb. I am um, the, our manage, the manager um, of alumni retention and support for Friendship Public Charter Schools. Um, I've been with Friendship for three years, um, but then I was with um, a, a school partner at Collegiate for about three years before that with the College Success Foundation. I was with the College Success Foundation for nine years um, as a um, college prep advisor. So I've been in this college act success access landscape for um, over 10 years. So um, I just think it's really important for families to have as much information as possible um, and as for everything, but especially around the, the financials of college, because that can be very overwhelming. Um, I mean, it is very overwhelming. So um, this is just really a general overview of college financials. So we're not getting really deep into how to apply for the FAFSA and filling out financial aid applications and that sort of thing that would really happen in um, your student's senior year. Um, this webinar and this whole series is geared towards families with um, any grade, um, any part of the friendship family from pre-K to alumni, uh, you know, so Again, at the end of this, there'll be information um, on how to contact me and also our college and career counselors in both high schools. So um, today we're going to talk about really what does college really cost? Um, financial aid, what is it? Go through some terms and definitions, different types of financial aid, and managing the cost beyond financial aid, and some tips and tools. So what does college really cost? Um, I always talk about this kind of like buying a car. When you go to the dealership and there's that big sticker price on the car, rarely do you ever pay that. Does one ever pay that? Um, you know, it's whatever. It's the deal of the month or there's ways to finance it, right? You have, um, take out a car note. You um, have a military discount or um, a friends and family discount or it's Tuesday. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> the point is, is that there's lots of different things that take that sticker price and bring it significantly down. So the same thing is with college. The sticker price is the published cost of attendance. What a college is listed as their full cost um, of attendance but then you take those different um, scholarships, grants. Um, this is any of that called gift aid. This is free money that you don't pay back, right? This isn't loans. This is the free money that's awarded by the college, and that gives you your net price. So the difference between the two um, is the real amount that your family pays. So that sticker price, that published price minus grants and scholarships equals the net price. Um, this also will include most often um, with lo some loans and income, but really just looking at just that idea that don't ever, ever be, don't ever cancel out of college or dismiss this college because the sticker price is too high. Um, and I'm gonna show you just real quickly um, what I'm talking about. So I just, this is my favorite website. It's very data heavy, um, but it gives really good information. It's collegeresults.org. I put the website on the bottom. Um, I, they have this really cool tool where you can just put in as many colleges as you want and compare them. Um, and so I just picked 10 kind of random schools like everywhere from like an Ivy League um, to a lot of local area schools um, and some just more popular um, colleges for it with our students. So um, as you see, so this is showing us, this is in this 
you see these tabs, these yellow tabs at the top. Um, these are the different data points that they compare, but this is price and financial aid. If you look over in the um, third column, so between the red and the orange, this is total price for in-state on-campus students. Um, I, private colleges, you see there's no difference between, um, there's no difference between in-state and out-of-state because it's private. The um, where you'll see a difference and where it's going to be a bit more expensive because we're out of state. DC is considered out of state for everything except UDC. Um, it's going to be a bit higher, but we have DC tag, which will bring it back lower. So anyway, not going to get too deep into that, but just looking at this, this between the red and the orange, this is the sticker price. Okay. This is the total price on campus, living on campus. Um, and you see that like, Princeton is 63,000, Georgetown is almost 70,000, right? GW, almost 70,000. You go down um, A&T, 19,000. It is um, a state school, so that's why it's a bit, It's a, I mean, it's still on the um, less expensive side of things. Um, okay, so then we go over to the next column between this orange and yellow. This is average net price after grants. So you can see significant drops um, in this net, this net cost, right? But you go one over more that between that yellow and green, and this is the average net price for low-income students. So this is really um, about Pell eligibility, Pell grant, which is we'll talk about in a minute, the federal um, grant based on financial um, need, a family's financial need. Um, I'm not, I will say that most families that I work with, that most friendship families um, will be Pell eligible, so will be in this range somewhere. Um, not every, right, obviously, but I will say the majority of students that I work with tend to have, um, which we'll talk about in a minute, uh, um, more about the expected family contribution that would fall within this range. So you can see how just a huge drop, right, like let's just look, take Princeton, went from 60, almost, you know, 63000 to $2,000. I mean, Georgetown as well dropped super low. Um, College Park down to nine thousand. GW it's went from sixty seven to fourteen. Um, Spellman um, went to thirty five. So you can just kind of see how they all dropped um, a bit. Um, so this is just a just a good. I will come back to this, but um, it's just really interesting. I just so you see that like that sticker price no that no one is pay, paying the sticker price grants let me just say this one more time grant not one more time let me just say this grants are not merit based or need based so this isn't scholarships based on um you know a student's gpa or their leadership or things like that this is just looking at a student's FAFSA, their financial aid, right? Like what they're eligible for. And no one is paying, very, not saying no one, but very few people pay that sticker price. So um, when we talk about cost of attendance, what we're not, so the things that go into, um, I call it the, the, this bucket, right? Your bucket is that estimated total cost to attend a college, which includes your tuition, your fees, your housing, and your meals. We call it room and board. You'll see that listed as room and board. Um, and then also books and supplies, transportation, and personal expenses. This, these combined estimated costs equals the size of your bucket. Now, you'll see that the first three are direct costs. Those are directly going to the college. They will bill you directly for this. So tuition and fees, room and board, housing and meals. That is, that has to be paid to the college in order for um, your student to attend. 
They also include these indirect costs, though, of books and supplies, transportation, and personal expenses. These are included in your cost of attendance, which means you can be you can get financial aid to cover those, but these aren't going, you're not paying the school. I mean, you're for these, like you can get your books on Amazon, right? Like transportation is, a, you know, you might fly, you might take a 15 hour train or bus or drive, right? Like, and then personal expenses really vary by student. So, but the great thing is that colleges are including these in their cost of attendance so that these indirect costs so that you can get financial aid to cover these indirect costs to go towards this. So financial aid is what we call what you use, what's used to fill your cost of attendance bucket. So everything, um, so that's, so we'll kind of talk about this as like in a bucket metaphor through the rest of this, but that's really what we're talking about when we talk about financial aid is how are you filling that bucket? So what is financial aid? So there's um, federal financial aid. So this is um, money from the federal government. Um, so this is money like, um, like when you pay your taxes and everyone pays their taxes, this is all going into that um, to be distributed. Um, so federal student grants, loans, and work study. The Pell Grant is the biggest grant that they have, the federal grant. Um, and this is, it is up to $6,195 a year. Um, that's what it is. I believe that they set that for the next school year. So 2020, 2021 school year, that is and it's everything, all financial aid is dispersed in two semesters. So fall, so you'll get half for fall semester and the other half for spring semester. Your federal loans, um, like your subsidized and subsidized loans, parent plus loans, um, those are federal loans. And then work study is a federal program, um, which we'll talk about more in a little bit, but um, this is all federal financial aid. It requires the annual filing of the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid, to be considered for eligibility. Um, really all financial aid, you have to do your FAFSA, but it is absolutely required to get any of these grants, loans or member study. Um, you have to, the student has to file the FAFSA every single year they're in college. There is free money. So this is the not federal um, financial aid, but other financial aid, which includes institutional grants and scholarships. So this is money from the college. Um, and this is really where you get your biggest bang for your buck, I'd say. Um, you can get lots and lots and lots and lots of money. As you can see, like a lot of that, if only the federal grant, right, that is really guaranteed for um, families with below, um, we'll talk, but, but whose EFC is zero, effective family contribution is zero, um, is only $6,195, right? There's, a, so that net price, which is really so much lower than, than those sticker prices, is that that money is being filled in, those grants, from the school itself. Um, those are often automatic. You, once you're accepted to the school, you're automatically getting that money. Um, like you're automatically being considered for all of that in those grants and scholarships. There are some scholarships though that you have to do additional applications. All of that though is on the college's website. So um, private scholarships and then um, DC residents have a couple of other pieces of financial aid, the DC TAG, DC Tuition Assistance Grant, um, which is up to $10,000 to cover the difference between in-state and out-of-state tuition. So we talk about cost of attendance, tuition is one part of that. So it's not going towards the whole cost of attendance, it's just tuition. So the difference between in-state and out-of-state tuition up to $10,000. There's also the mayor scholarship, um, which, so DC TAG as for any public school in the country, 
and that's up to 10,000. Any private HBCU and any DC area private school, so Trinity, GW, American, Howard, all of those, um, you get up to, you can get 2,500 a year. So it's up to 10,000 a year for public schools, up to 2,500 a year for private HBCUs and local private schools. So UDC is not DC Tech eligible. That is our state, that's our state college, our state university. Um, but Mayor Scholarship is, I think it's 4,000 a year. Um, and you can use that towards UDC as well. And those, um, the applicant, uh, they're all online um, through the Aussie website, um, the office state of the super state superintendent. Okay, so then the private DC money, DC cap, um, they have the last dollar award, which is 4,000 a year. If you have a 2.5 and above, you're eligible for it. The CSF scholars, they have their leadership 1,000, um, but you need to be part of their program. Um, either Upward Bound, which is at Tech Prep, or just CSF Scholars, which is at Collegiate. Um, and then Posse, we are a Posse City, which means we have the Posse Scholarship. Um, and there are six colleges, really great colleges, um, that students get, can get full tuition to. And that all of these are applications um, that you have to do. So. That was all free money. <laughs> then there's this other part of financial aid, which is the investment money, right? So private loans, again, this is the not federal loans. This is private loans, um, things that you get out through banks, credit unions, family support, and student employment outside of work study, federal work study. This is all investment money. Again, you are putting in this money, your students putting in this money, your family's putting in this money, and the idea is that you're really getting, it grows because you're getting this amazing return on your investment, which is a college education and all the things that come from that. So go over some terms and definitions. Grant is free money. Scholarship is free money with strings attached <laughs> because scholarship so is really around um, we'll talk about that in a little bit more, but scholarships have strings attached, right? You have to um, usually do applications, you have to, um, you know, keep a certain, either stay in a certain activity or keep a certain GPA, that sort of thing. Um, but both are free money and both are great. Work study is on campus job funded using federal or state money. And a student loan is aid that must be repaid when you leave college, even if you don't graduate. So once a loan is taken out, it has to be repaid, whether or not, you know, any the degree is um, finished. Um, so it's just really important to remember that debt and no degree is something that I'm sure you know people that have gone to college, taken out loans, and have had to come home for various reasons. So that is something that we really, really, really try hard. And we really want all of our friendship students to not um, have debt and no, with no degree. Debt is an investment, and we want to make sure that there's a good return on that investment. So the types of financial aid is we have gift aid and we have self-help aid. So the gift aid is this free money. So merit-based scholarships, again, that's around academics, athletic, community service, art, leadership. Again, those kind of strings attached. Need-based grants based on families' finances. DC resident grants, and parents must be able to demonstrate DC residency. Then you have your self-help aid, which are those federal loans um, and private loans, work study. The thing with work study, and you'll see when we go through a financial aid award letter in a little bit, is that it's not always offered and it's not guaranteed. So when you do your FAFSA, when your child does their FAFSA, they actually have to check that they want to be considered for, for work study. And even if they check that, when their college is reviewing their student aid report, which is what is a report from the FAFSA, they might not award the student work study. And if they are awarded work study, the student still has to get on campus, 
apply for a work study, find a work study job, apply for the work study job, get the work study job, work the hours, and then work study is paid like a paycheck to the student. It's not just a going directly back to the student's bill to their account. It's going to your student, which is great, and it helps them with costs of like living and being a person, but mm, most of the time it does not make it way, its way back to um, their account. So to receive any aid again, any aid, you, your student and you have to complete your FAFSA. It is a free application, okay, for federal student aid. Please make sure that you always go to fafsa.gov, G-O-V, do not use .com or .org or any of the other ones. They, .com especially is gonna try to like assign you, basically get you to pay for someone to help you. As a friendship family, you have all the help you need, both with our college and career counselors at our high schools. Also, we have a you know DC CAP, which um, College Success Foundation, other school partners that come in. Um, college Board comes in, Upper Bound, um, as well as myself. Um, so lots and, and other counselors. So there's no reason. Um, to pay for any help for anything related to financial aid. You shouldn't pay to play, and you shouldn't pay for to apply for financial aid. Um, so it's really, it's used for all types of federal student aid, but again, any of the DC aid, you have to have your FAFSA done in order to, it's like one of the documents you need. Most private scholarships, you have to have your um, FAFSA done, and also in order to get your financial aid award letter from your college, which almost every private scholarship needs, you have to have your FAFSA done because that's what the schools use to determine financial aid to award students. So again, just to um, get a little bit of this FAFSA 101, the goal of the FAFSA is to um, collect a family's personal and financial information in order to calculate the expected family contribution, your EFC. It's kind of what I was saying earlier, EFC, um, is the amount of money as determined by federal methodology. So they have this, all these, this formula, like you fill out your FAFSA and they have formulas that determine what your EFC is that represents the family's ability to pay for one year of college. So filling out the FAFSA does not make you responsible as a parent or guardian to pay for anything. It is just determining el the uh, eligibility and the um, amount that your family is could um, your family's ability to pay for one year of college. Um, it is not again filling it out does not mean you are responsible for paying it for paying for anything. But in order for your student to get any sort of financial aid, you have to fill it out. The student fills it out, but they need the parent financial information. It m must be filed every year. The FAFSA must be filed every year. The student is in school. Um, in order to, for colleges to award students any financial aid. Here's just a quick reference. This is from 2017 um, for about EFCs. Um, so adjusted gross income, and then it really kind of, this is just, it's so much more than just this, but this is just looking at dependent children. Um, so, and what the estimated um, expected family contribution will be. So. You can kind of just see if you have two ch dependent children and you make 30 or under, your EFC is zero. If you um, have one dependent child, your EFC is a thousand essentially, right? So I'm just kind of going like this. Now this is not, again, the be all end all, do not like, this is just a really quick, um, oh, just, uh, yeah, do not quote any of this, <laughs> but um, there's really, you can do FAFSA Forecaster um, if you're interested to see what your EFC would be. There's just like lots of different tools that you can kind of play around to see what um, your EFC would be. And I'm happy to walk anyone through this. And if there's any um, extra, um, extenuating cir circumstances or any change in job or medical things or, you know, unfortunately, you know, God forbid a death in the family. That's all something that you can speak directly to the finance college's financial aid office and they can take, they'll take all that into consideration.
Um, so calculating financial need, we look at cost of attendance, so that whole bucket, right? So tuition, room and board, those direct costs, but also the indirect costs of um, books and supplies, transportation, and just the miscellaneous personal expenses. So minus the EFC, the expected family contribution, and that gives you your demonstrated, your student's demonstrated financial need. This is the student's maximum eligibility for financial aid from the school. Um, so go back to our bucket, right? So you have your EFC, right? This bottom, the expected family contribution what your family, what the government has determined based on your FAFSA, um, what your family can be expected to pay, plus any gift aid, so grants and scholarships, um, plus any self-help aid, so your loans, work study, that goes into your bucket. Anything that's still left over is called is unmet need, right? That's unmet. So you might still have some need, right? Your bucket still might have some things in it, <laughs> but there's no more financial aid and that's called the gap. That's the unmet need. So this bucket price, so we talk about sticker price versus net price, well really the sticker price versus the bucket price, right? So your gap um, of unmet need is, which includes this plus your, um, expect, your EFC, your expected family contribution, that is your family share and the family responsibility, really. So again, just coming back to this kind of bucket price, which is your actual cost, you can see um, how the different financial aid, I mean, at this, we don't really see the specifics, but understanding why a school like Princeton is giving a lot of financial aid in terms of grant, Money, again, this um, is before, this is after, this is grant. So this isn't after loans, these net, the, between the orange and the green, this is after grants. So um, you can see that some schools are really good about giving lots and lots and lots and lots of money in terms of grants. Um, and some schools are like, not as great. <laughs> um, and that's really dependent on um, your school. So um, to break this down to actual numbers, I am looking at um, cost of attendance. It's like just 40 of the schools, $40,000 cost of attendance. Okay. So again, majority of EFCs that I see are zero. Some are much higher. Um, oftentimes there's an EFC of like 500 or 1500 but the majority of EFCs that I see um, is zero. So that's what I'm going with, just so you kind of see what, um, that even having EFC of zero doesn't mean that you get free college. Okay, so that eligibility for financial aid, right? So that cost of attendance minus EFC is your maximum eligibility, like the maximum eligibility, the maximum amount that you are eligible for, your student is eligible for, for financial aid. So this, EFC zero, so full cost of attendance, student is eligible to receive in financial aid. So that is $40,000. So then once you, in your senior year, your student fills out their FAFSA, they will receive a financial aid award letter from every college they're admitted to, which basically tells them all the grants, scholarships, and loans. Um, this includes all the, the federal financial aid plus institutional money. Um, so they got a $2,500 scholarship from the college, great. They are fully Pell eligible, right? So they get that full 6,195. They get their federal loan, so the subsidized loan and unsubsidized loan. Subsidized loan, interest doesn't accrue while the student's in school. Unsubsidized loan, it does. Um, so that total financial aid from the school that they're getting is so and that includes federal money because the schools are getting the money from the federal government to then award to students um so it's fourteen thousand one hundred and ninety five dollars 
They were also awarded work study. You'll see how that's in the dashed because I don't always, I don't like to include it because it's not guaranteed and students have to get that job and work those hours and then somehow be responsible to put it back <laughs> towards their bill. Um, this is DC money, so it won't be on their award letter that they get from their school, but it will be on there once they send their information and their these award letters, their DC TAC award letter and their last dollar award letter to their school, it will go on their bill. But um, DC TAG, um, the difference between in-state and out-of-state tuition for the school was 9,500. So they got that. And then the last dollar award, again, if you have a 2.5 GPA and above, you're eligible. You're not guaranteed, but you're eligible. And that's 4,000 a year. So total award is $29,195. So then we go to the top right. Your eligibility for financial aid was 40,000. The amount of financial aid received was 29,195. So this gap, right? We talk about the gap is $10,805. So we go down here, 10,805. I put EFC, I mean, work study back in over here because that's not guaranteed money. Um, and then plus your expected family contribution, which in this, this case is zero. So the due to the school is 12,305. Now, that is a family responsibility, whether it is in, well, we'll talk about that in a second, but this is what is due to the school in order for the student to enroll, that period space space. Now, to say that like you're getting a $40,000 education for a fraction of that is a pretty good deal, right? But again, you really wanna look where you can get the most money that makes a big difference is this scholarship institutional money. This, um, sorry, institutional money in terms of scholarships or grants. Okay, so how do you fund that gap? So using current income and savings, so the 529 savings accounts, those are the um, college savings accounts. There's lots of information out there. I'm happy to talk more about them. Um, you can set them up anytime before a student starts college. Um, tuition payment plan. So taking that you know, $10,000, $12,000, dividing it over 10 months, um, college will let you do that. Usually there's like no interest on that. It's just dividing, doing the payment plan. Um, which can break your payments down into much more manageable chunks. The di federal direct, the parent plus loan, a parent loan for undergraduate students. Um, the great thing about a parent plus loan is that it's a fixed interest rate. It's a lower interest rate than private loans. Um, it is credit based. So if you have great credit, you'll likely get it. If you don't have great credit, still apply because if you are denied based on credit, your student can get an additional $4,000 in unsubsidized loan. Um, and then there's also private student loans, you know, some state sponsored loans, banks and credit unions. Um, yeah, but these go into, um, students often can't get them because they need, um, or they have trouble getting them because they need co-signers and all that. So, okay. So other things to do scholarships so there are lots of different resources to find scholarships um, that are not based um, that are not institutional or college scholars like from the school so there are all the national search searches that i've listed here um, google's also a great thing because you can just kind of put in just different characteristics of your student what they're interested in studying maybe like big like instrument they play or whatever and like get kind of tailored scholarships and then local resources um, underlined and green the college and career advisor if your student is in high school um, both tech prep and collegiate have a college and career counselor um, who is well like is the go-to resource for everything their office has all the scholarships make sure you're on any of their email lists text blasts um, like this is your best friend, um, especially senior year, or junior year too. DCPS has a great, if you Google dollars for scholars or dollars for college, that's what they do. Um, 
they have, it's a great newsletter that, that's sent out monthly uh, about different scholarships. And a lot of them are geared towards DC students. Friendship has our own scholarship, our Friendship Scholars, which they um, students apply in their spring of their senior year. DC CAP, um, there's always a DC CAP advisor. Every school has one, as well as the College Success Foundation is another organization that has, um, that there's um, an advisor at both Collegiate and Tech Prep. So any questions? Again, this was a very quick, general overview of college money <laughs> and all that goes into it. I have my information here. Again, I'm the manager for alumni retention and support, but also do a lot with in the high schools with college access and success. Um, Ms. Jackson is Tech Prep's college and career counselor. And Miss uh, Washington, Miss A. Washington, is Collegiate's College and Career Counselor. So please feel free to reach out to any of us. Um, if you are in, um, if your student is in elementary or middle, um, feel free to reach out to me. If they're in high school, really go to your College and Career Counselor for more information. But I'm also happy to chat um, as well. So anyway, it was. Um, a pleasure talking to you guys. And again, any questions, please reach out. College is expensive and overwhelming and all of those things, but it is very manageable when you break it down into um, just smaller bites, right? Um, and this is so this is really what I'm here to help you with is kind of helping manage that and helping navigate that. So anyway, I look forward to talking to you for the next webinar. Take care.